this is the uh, coronal images of uh, 43 year old female with abdominal pain uh, it show uh, in the arterial phase uh, contrast and ct scan coronal images which shows uh, that uh, um, uh, small ball wall uh, is enhancing and uh, is fluid filled and there is evidence of ascites uh, 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 jejunum uh, uh, shows a slightly thickened wall uh, with this uh, mucosal enhancement and uh, 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 suggesting that there is uh, some evidence of uh, ischemia uh, there is also an engorgement of uh, uh, mesenteric vessels uh, and uh, uh, mesentery appears to be uh, slightly hazy. And uh, stomach wall also shows a similar enhancement pattern with the enhancing uh, uh, thick uh, walls, uh, uh, mucosal enhancement and uh, uh, with a uh, slightly thickened wall. Uh, so, uh, well, liver appears normal. Uh, bladder is slightly distended, but I cannot appreciate any AF or high within it. Um, uh, okay. Let's focus on one one entity at a time. So, again, pinpoint. point. What is the most striking striking finding here? Um, there is a small wall uh, wall thickening and uh, enhancement with the ascites. Okay. Small bowel and uh, um, uh, stomach. Excellent. Okay. With the air, air for size seen within the uh, stomach wall. Okay. It could be projectional. This is in default. The air is in default. Okay. So in the gastric fault, so it's normal. Okay. And uh, so you 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 are saying that there is thickening and enhancement in the small bowel and in the stomach. Yes. Always once so, uh, once, once you see this uh, okay. this picture, always I need to uh, make sure. What do you think the distribution? Do you think it's proximal small bowel, diffuse small bowel, or distal bowel? Uh, Ma'am, uh, it is uh, proximal uh, small bowel, uh, predominant on duodenum and uh, ileal uh, loops. Uh, I cannot appreciate duodenal involvement within it. Okay. Uh, so this is the stomach, right? Yes. And we see that there is thickening of the gastric rods yes, and slight edema around it. Yes. And this is the jejunal loops. As we can see, yes. this is the fault. So there is jejunal or jejunal. proximal small bowel thickening, yes. neural edema, yes. area of androgenous enhancement. So, and you mentioned earlier, right, on the enhancement. What do you think in the enhancement of this wall compared to this wall? Um, it is uh, hypoatenuating as compared to the uh, and a thickened, uh, suggesting a ischemic pattern. Yeah, this area it, it could be either due to very edematous wall or ischemia so far. Yes. And you mentioned that there is a small ascites, ascites. or a small pelvic free fluid, so right? Yes, so, uh, this so, is, uh, so your uh, how would you summarize your finding if you would give me a, a headline, a topic for this finding? Uh, Ma'am, uh, it is uh, uh, most likely in a uh, uh, small bowel obstruction. Uh, it could be ischemic uh, uh, enteritis. Uh, oh. I would like to review the uh, um, vessels to see if there is any. Uh, Occlusive pattern um, to trace out the arteries, uh, spermisenteric artery, and uh, if uh, uh, other possibilities could be. Uh, 
The very important important point to mention. Vessels are patents. Vessels are patents. Okay. Uh, I cannot appreciate any uh, hypertense uh, calculus. So, Galston uh, uh, alias is ruled out. And uh, other possibility could be infection. Uh, Excellent. So, yes. So, we are dealing uh, with a proximal enteritis, gastritis, and digital thickening. So, yeah. proximal enteritis. And what is infectious? Uh, yes, ma'am. Second is ischemic. Third, can it be a third, or a third cause for proximal enteritis? Yes, ma'am. Um, mm, proximal enteritis. Uh, ma'am, I cannot uh, um, yeah. appreciate okay. your question. So I always say, uh, excellent. Uh, we have a continuation for this case. Stay tuned. So excellent. As you mentioned, this is coronal CT scan enhanced uh, of the abdomen and pelvis. Clearly, we can see that there is uh, gastric thickening, proximal small bowel, or uh, jejunal lobe thickening with heterogeneous enhancement, focal area of decreased enhancement, worrisome for ischemic changes, or severe mural edema adjacent congested mesentery and small free fluid. So in summary, uh, or, uh, first, the important negative, there is no nematosis intestinalis, right? No free air. Uh, in summary, we are dealing with a proximal small bowel enteritis. Enteritis meaning inflammation of the proximal small bowel, stomach and jejunum. So this is a proximal enteritis. Causes of proximal enteritis, I always say that they are the triple I. So it's infection, ischemia, inflammation. Always try to remember it as I, I, I. Infection, the typical infections that affect the proximal are, uh, for example, like gerdiasis or these at atypical infections. Uh, second is the ischemic. Jejunal lobes are one of the uh, watershed area. If the patient is having hypoperfusion, <laughs> Uh, or cardiac patient, jejunal lobe might be affected by ischemia, so ischemic. However, the association of stomach goes against it. Why? Do you know why gastric ischemia is rare? Mom, it has a collateral supply uh, from the celiac excess as well as... Yes, excellent. So having associated gastric thickening goes against ischemia. Uh, because stomach has uh, uh, multiple blood supplies, so it's rare to have a gastric ischemia. So, uh, but still it's in the differential diagnosis. Third one is inflammation. Inflammation affecting proximal small bowel include either eosinophilic uh, enteritis, it usually affects duodenal, jejunum, and stomach, present with proximal enteritis affecting stomach and duodenal lobes. So, after this small discussion, and keeping in mind that uh, uh, the differential diagnosis or the summary of proximal enteritis and differential diagnosis of ischemia, infection, inflammation, these are the additional images of the same patient. Chest X-ray, and the patient has had history of dysphagia and did an esophageogram. Um, um, first of all, this is an esophageogram which shows the uh, that uh, the uh, there is a, a dilatation of the esophagus uh, with uh, uh, concentric narrowing at the uh, just above the gastroesophageal junction. Could Actually, be this is it's wide, right? See? Yes, it's, it's there is no narrowing. Maybe because if it's not dynamic, but you can see this is dilated all through. Yes, all through dilated, dilated esophagus. Yes, uh, with pedulous gastroesophageal junction. Uh, so it can be uh, scleroderma. Excellent. Dilated patulous esophagus and the chest x ray. What do you see in the chest x ray? Um, uh, uh, mid zone and lower zone uh, uh, reticular changes with uh, 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 peripheral uh, based uh, consol uh, consolidation pattern. Uh, reticular nodular changes in mid and lower zones and uh, 
there is, uh, uh, however, lung volumes appears normal. Uh, cardiac size uh, is uh, slightly uh, large, but uh, and. Uh, so the reticulonodular pattern, do you think it's a peripheral reticulonodular shadow, uh, peripheral reticulonodular thickening in patellar esophagus you would think of? Scleroderma, as you mentioned. What are the lung manifestation of scleroderma? Um, reticulonodular uh, uh, pattern is seen in mid and lower zones uh, with uh, yes. some reticulonodular What is the cause of reticulation? Fibrosis, right? Fibrosis. They have fibrosis. So this, this, the chest X-ray, we can see that the volume is slightly reduced, and we can see that there is the pleura here is thickened. There is uh, reticulation, and the picture goes with lung fibrosis or interstitial lung disease. With the patellar esophagus, as you mentioned, excellent uh, interpretation. You would think of scleroderma. So. If the patient has a scleroderma, as you diagnosed it from the X-ray and esophageogram, what would you think the cause of the patient's and proximal enteritis from the differential diagnosis that we mentioned from the three eyes? And vasculitis. Excellent. So this is proximal enteritis caused by vasculitis. With these areas are small ischemic changes from the vasculitis. You can see we got the diagnosis from the other images. Always try to collaborate with other uh, imaging modalities, any previous images. So uh, good, excellent diagnosis. Uh, they did endoscopy and biopsy, and this is uh, vasculitis caused by uh, in a patient with scleroderma. So always, whenever you see proximal enteritis, involvement of jejunum and stomach, think of one of three. It's either infectious, or ischemic, if the patient is cardiac poor function. However, ischemic usually spares the stomach. Uh, other thing is inflammatory. Inflammatory include isenophilic and vasculitis. Isenophilic patient will have blood isenophilia. Vasculitis, usually they will have other risk factor. Either they, the patient will be scleroderma, uh, the patient will be rheumatoid arthritis or having any other risk factor or association with other diseases as this patient. Usually would present as circumferential thickening and the wall will show homogeneous enhancement, soft tissue enhancement, rather than decreased enhancement. Plus, bowel lymphoma, small bowel lymphoma uh, would present with aneurysmal dilatation. Uh, the third uh, point uh, that goes against it is uh, small bowel lymphoma usually involve the terminal ileum or distal ileal loop. Uh, proximal or jejunal lymphoma is very rare. And uh, if present, then uh, it would be in an immunocompromised patient or if the patient has uh, celiac disease. Uh, but medically free patient with jejunal lymphoma is not common. Uh, this is the first thing against it. Next is it will present as circumferential thickening with homogeneous enhancement and adjacent enlarged lymph nodes, unlike this decreased enhancement. And it will have aneurysmal dilatation rather than uh, just distended bowel. Can we keep Crohn's disease in the differential? Okay, Crohn's disease, uh, again, Crohn's disease uh, is part of the inflammatory. Uh, bowel disease um, could uh, Crohn's disease is biphasic. However, isolated jejunal loop thickening with decreased enhancement is not uh, a typical feature for Crohn's. Usually, it is a structuring disease. Uh, it would affect. Uh, it will have skip lesion. Here, we don't see skip lesion. We see only uh, proximal uh, enteritis. One uh, point, uh, very important differentiating point or against Crohn's disease is having fluids. Crohn's disease, you always see cases of Crohn's disease. Go back to your previous cases. You would see the patient having fistulizing, very bad shaped bowel, and still you don't see ascites, unless the patient is extremely sick and very bad Crohn's disease. 
So presence of ascites goes against Crohn's. Right, ma'am. Um, can we go to the coronal image? And um, the candidates are asking about the soft tissue area next to the portal vein. Soft just tissue area next to this one? Uh, soft tissue area next to the portal vein just below the liver. Yeah, the soft tissue area. Can this you just... The pancreas. Okay. Uh, they mean this one. This is, the, uh, this is a normal pancreas. We can see here this is the duodenum, and this is the gallbladder, this is the CBD, and this is the pancreas. If we are strolling, then you would see that this continues. The pancreas, the pancreatic head. Okay, ma'am, there is another question that does the pattern of the bowel thing suggest any specific cause? Um, this is mural edema and the cross enhancement. No, pattern of enhancement in this case, no. Uh, pattern enhancement in other cases. Uh, as we mentioned, if the pattern of enhancement is homogenous soft tissue enhancement, then we would think of malignancy. Or uh, if the enhancement is stratified, uh, and then we would think of uh, edema, mural edema in the wall, causing stratification. Uh, and uh, mural edema can present in infection, inflammation, and even in vasculitis. 